Welcome to Exhibit Force. When you first log in, you're going to notice that you have a listing of all events that are in the system. That listing of events is going to have the event name and event number that Exhibit Force actually assigns. It's going to show the um, shipment dates, event dates, um, return, schedule return dates, and if the shipment has any additional um, attachments that will show here in this list. Any notes that you want to put in can be put in from here as well to add a note for those particular events. You can even add a website or if you want to copy this event to create a new event, you can do that from here. And the current status of this event, whether it's been submitted to Elite Expo for us to pull that inventory yet or not. And once it is submitted, once we confirm receipt, you will see it as being confirmed. You could click the plus sign in front of any event and that's going to give you more details about the event. So you would have additional information, what inventory is going out for the event, etc. would show up once you click that plus sign. We're going to now create a new event. To create a new event, we're going to click the Create Event button that's just above the header here. The event name we're going to put in. Putting it as pending just put, keeps it on your calendar, but it does not allow for any inventory to put in. It just simply puts it on your calendar. The event abbreviation is not a required field, but it does give you the ability to put in an abbreviation if it's more familiar for your staff um, to see that as the abbreviated name. Any reference numbers that you might have for your file numbers. Um, so perhaps you might have this in your um, listing as event number 256. You can certainly put that in. Again, it's not a required field. Required fields will have this red notation of being required. Event location. So if the event is in one of your currently existing locations, you could choose it from the drop down. Otherwise, you will need to add it. So you click the plus sign and you can now say, I'm going to add an event in Industry City, and that's California. So now I can choose Industry City, California from the drop down as an event location. My event dates are going to be the 29th through the 31st of May. If your company is set up where you have multiple divisions and you're separating access to, to events by division, um, you could separate this and say, I want this for a particular division and choose that division. Um, and that would need to be uh, noted by us during the setup process if your company has those divisions so we can create those um, different things in the setup. Or if you want multiple of specific divisions, and if not, if you just have one division and it's just a certain group of people that are going in and, do, and using Exhibit Force, it would be full access. And that is the default. We'll click Continue. And that now has created that event on your list of events. So now we're going to go in and you can pull inventory. Pulling inventory for your events is very similar to online shopping. So if you come over here and you can click the different categories. So I want to see my electronics and I want to see my exhibits. I can check those boxes and that will give me all electronics or all exhibits. Or if you see a plus sign and you want to be more specific, I could say, well, I want flooring, but I only want to see my carpet tiles. I can then check just carpet tiles and get just that specific item from or subcategory of that category. So now I've got my electronics, I've got my exhibits, and I've got my carpet tiles. So I want to ship my carpet tiles, but I want to see a little better picture to see if these are the correct carpet tiles. I can click on the small thumbnail and that will enlarge the image so that I can truly see if that is the, the actual item I want to pull for that inventory. And yes, it is. I want that 10 by 10 carpet tile. I change this quantity to one because I can see we have one total in inventory. One is available, so I can add that one item for this event. Now once I've added it, it becomes a zero, so there's no um, of inventory available for anybody else to pull for other events. So now I want to choose my exhibit. 
So I can come through, look at the different exhibits that are available. I'm going to choose this 10 by 7 and a half pop-up display. I can see some information about it, when the actual item was added to inventory, what the item number is, a product, brief product uh, listing as far as the uh, name, a little more detail in the description, the size of the item, as well as where it's located. So here we have my quantity total, how many are available. I'm going to add one for this particular event. So now as I'm adding items, I'll notice that my shopping cart or current items is now showing these items that I've pulled so far for this event. So if I want to add some electronics and I need to say, okay, well, I'm going to send, um, I need an HDMI cord and I need to have an extension cord. So we're going to send one of the extension cords. So here's my items. Now let's say I want, oh, that's not the extension cord I wanted. I can simply click the X here to remove an item from the cart. Yes, I want to delete that from the cart. It will bring back my inventory with the adjusted numbers. And now I could say, okay, no, the one I wanted is the other extension cord. And I'm going to choose that extension cord. So now I have my updated list. So once you're done adding your items that you want to pull for the event, you click the continue button. Now this will give you a confirmation saying, yes, these are the items that I truly want to pull for this event. Once you click continue here, it's going to take you to the actual additional show information for this order form. So what e is my email address? I can add my phone number. billing contact. You can also set this up so it defaults. If your company has a specific default for your billing information, you just need to let us know during the setup process, and that way we'll, we'll automatically fill that information in each time. Our information for the event, again, I can add additional information, but it's not required. If I have show information as far as decorator, additional information for contractor, I can add that information as well. But I do need to select this information. So material arrivals. So I need the, inf the actual um, materials to arrive at show site on the 28th. And I can put in my time. So I need it to be there at 0800 on the 28th. And the move-in is going to be on the 29th. It moves in at 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock. When the event starts on the 29th at 1700. And the event end date is the 31st at 1400. It's moving out on the 31st. Again, we'll have that set up for 1530. And any additional notes. So little notes that you want to put for yourself. And when we're to come and actually recover that. So we want Elite Expo in there at 3.30 to recover those items. Okay, great. The self-ship is if you're going to be arranging your own um, freight shipping for this event and you're not going to be using Elite Expo for this um, shipment to come out of the warehouse and go to the show. So if you're not using us, you would check this box and put the information as far as when your carrier will be picking up from our warehouse and the return date that it will be coming back into the warehouse. If the shipment is only going to the show and will not be returning, you would check this as one way. Otherwise, leave it unchecked, and you're going to put the information in the shipment as far as where it's going to and where it's coming from. So this shipment is going to arrive to Industry City, California, don't have any locations in, I can put a new location. It's going to show site in Industry City, California. Location name is the Hyatt.
their address and their zip code. Any phone numbers, et cetera, that you want to put in. Again, not required fields. So now you can select it. If it's care of, we can put a care of in here. Any booth number information, shipping instructions. Then we're going to put in the recovery information. So I'm going to be recovering it from Industry City, California, coming out of the Hyatt Regency. Again, care of Freeman, booth number information, and shipping instructions. Special instructions, and if I have any files. So if I have a, an, a quick fax from the exhibit kit or additional documents that I want to attach, I can certainly add that file. Or if I have a rendering or if I have any kind of image files that I wanted to attach to this project, I can do that as well. I can copy in additional people from my company. So I can come in and I can copy in additional staff that I want to actually receive this. And at that point, I can then click either Submit or Save Quit. If I choose Save Quit, that creates it, but it doesn't, it's not actually been submitted to Elite Expo to pull yet. So basically, it puts it on the calendar, gives me an idea of the items that I want to send to the show, but it allows me to add additional items if I'm not quite sure yet on a particular item or additional items might be coming in that I want to add to it. However, once you do submit, then it will be pulled out of inventory. So if you never submit it, it will not get pulled. So you need to make sure at some point you do submit this to our inventory staff to pull out of our warehouse for you. Once you click Submit, it also locks it down. At that, that basically meaning that once it's locked down, you cannot add additional items to be pulled yourself. This makes it a clean order form, and then any additional items you need pulled that need added to the event, you need to email to us, and at, we would at that point add that to your order ourselves, and we'd go in and override it and put those additional items on there. And you'd be able to see that in your, in your listings. So we're going to click Submit, and you'll see that your order has been sent for confirmation, you'll receive an email notification saying that it's been sent out. If you have any questions, you can contact us. So at that point, you have your information, your show information, all that. This gives you a little summary of your event. It's going to list out your items that you've ordered, and everything is all here for you to see at that point on that confirmation. So if you go back and you go to your home screen, you'll now see that you have that event on your list of upcoming events. And you'll see that it has been submitted. Again, you can click the plus sign and you'll get a all that detail information will list out for you. Some of the other features of Exhibit Force allow you to go in and see all of your inventory. To do that, click on Inventory, then click on Inventory Catalog. This will take you straight to your current inventory list. And you can go in and see specific items. So I want to see my accessories or I want to see crate inventory. And it'll come up and give you that listing. It will show you how many you have in inventory. And it will also allow you to click to see how many you actually have available of that item in it. Now this listing of what's available is going to be what's available today. That does not mean that if you want to do this next week, you're going to have that same number because this is what's available today. However, you just we just created an event that pulled some of this inventory. So if you did the same report next week, it would show that these items are zero or one less, being that we've placed an order during that time frame. So if you want to change the date, you could come up here and change the date to a specific date, and that will tell you what's going to be available on that date. So now if I come in and I look at my um, different items that I have, say my electronics, and I go to that extension cord, I'm going to notice that now it's a zero during that time frame that I've chosen. 
So that can be adjusted up here to see what you'll have available during a particular time frame or for an upcoming event. You can also do a download. If you do a download, it will create a CSV file of everything that you have in inventory. Now this CSV file does not have any pictures on it, but it does give you a listing of the items that you have in inventory. You can also come in and you can do um, different type of uh, by event view. So I can see in 2018 the different um, items that I sent per actual show. So you can kind of get an idea of what's being sent to each event by doing an inventory list by event. And that can be helpful if you're trying to figure out what did you send last year to a particular show and you want to send those same items again. Another thing you could do if you want to see your events but you want to see it in a different format. You can click on the calendar and that will show you your upcoming events on a calendar view. And this again gives you access through the hyperlink to go to that event from that calendar. You can also go in and go into reporting. There's a report builder feature that allows you to create any report that you want uh, based on the items that you have, your activity to shows, and you can create your own reports, or you can have us um, go in and create reports for you. So right now we could come in and go, I want to see my event shipping info, continue to fields, and you could come in and, and add based on what field values you want to add to that report and place them in a specific order so they show on a report in a specific way. And that's some of the reporting options that are available in Exhibit Force. And those are the general features of Exhibit Force. Um, the basic entry um, that's necessary for entering your events in and ordering your inventory, a little bit on the reporting, and your calendar of events. If you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call at 847-324-3858.